In the previous video, we learned about joints, skinning, and IK. In this video, we're going to make a skeleton for our robot. Now, I will say, over the next few videos, there's a lot of steps that I go over, and you may miss a step, so feel free to back up and redo parts of this. Um, from my experience, people in classes often have to do this process more than once because they miss a step or they had the wrong object selected. That's okay. The second time will always be easier, but don't feel like you're you're you know lost just because you have to delete your skeleton and start over. So, the first thing we need to do is make a skeleton for our robot. Now, um, just for ease of navigating the scene, I'm going to put all of this mesh inside of its own layer. All right, I have already done that for the reference and the environment layer. So I'll go ahead and create a new one. I'll call this mod layer and hit save. Oh, apparently I have to do that. And that way if I need to freeze it or hide it, I can. So right now I'm going to freeze it just so I don't accidentally select it. Now, in my four views, or my, I guess we can use these two views. Um, but you can always go back to your, your four views just by um, going to Layouts and doing Four Panes. Or you can click this button, which will sort of set it back to the default. So in this view, I can bounce back and forth between multiple different angles, and that's that's pretty convenient. Um, where I'm going to start is the side view. And so if we open that up, the reason I'm starting from the side view is because this will be the easiest way for me to get that slight bend to the knee. So I will first go to my rigging tool set and go to skeleton and I'm going to create all of the joints that I need for places that I want my robot to be able to deform or rotate. So the first one though is I need a root joint. I need the sort of the parent to all of the other joints. And in this case, just because of the way the robot deforms, I would expect that to be sort of the 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 center of gravity of this. So I'll click that joint first. So this is where, if I were to make my character's head look around, that's where that would be located. My second joint, I would want to put at the point where I want my hips to rotate. So I think that would probably be right about, let's make it right about there. The next one is where I would want my knee to bend. So probably right about there. And then my ankle but also want to be able to rotate my character's toe and then I usually create a joint out here at the end um, frankly this joint isn't necessary but it helps in terms of being able to visualize what direction the toe is pointing so once I've done that I have all of the joints I really need for one leg but if I go back to my perspective view, you'll see that it didn't really line up with where I wanted it to on my character. Now, this is okay with me because what I really wanted more than anything was for this to be perfectly in the center of my robot. And it is. So this only lines up if you also have your model of your robot at the origin point of the scene. And if I turn on my grid, you'll see that my grid, the robot is sort of right at the center. One leg is on the one side, the other leg is on the other. So this is what um, I have, but that leg is not lining up with the actual leg. In this case, the reason I created it from the side was because I got that bend, but now if I go to the front, I can just grab this joint and slide it over and line it up with the rest of the leg. So something about like that. Now, if I expand this out, there's a trick as well. If you if you have it collapsed, if you just hold shift and click the little plus sign, it will expand all the way to the end. 
So if I have this selected, you'll see that I only have half of my character's body set up. I'm going to mirror that across in just a second. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and name this stuff. So if I click joint, I can name it here. I can double click and name this root. And then here I can click and name this L hip. Actually, I'm going to do L underscore hip. Um, and what this tells me is this is the character's left hip. And so I need to distinguish that because um, eventually the, the character will also have a right hip. So L hip, L knee. I'm going to make sure I put that underscore in there. And I'll show you why in a minute. L underscore ankle. Toe. And this last one on the end, the one I said was not 100% required, this one right here, we will call this L to toe end. And what that just lets me know is that that's the end of the hierarchy. And if I'm digging around through a bunch of different um, joints, I will, I will know, okay, that's the end. This also lets me know that I don't necessarily need to skin anything to this. If I skin this box out here on the end to my toe, the rotation of that toe joint is what will deform the box. The toe end is just out there so I can see which direction my toe is pointing when I rotate toe. Now we have half of a character. Something that a lot of people like to do, and yours may be turned on automatically, is under shading I can turn on x-ray joints. And what that will allow us to do is to see the joints through our model. And sometimes that can be useful. That way we don't have to constantly stay in wireframe. So what I want is I want a copy of all of these joints below my root, starting with left hip. I want a copy of those over on this side. Now I, I could just duplicate them and just move them over, but there's actually a quicker and even better way of doing that. If I go to skeleton, we have this option to mirror joints. And if I go in here, you'll see the way in which we can mirror it, we can mirror it in any of our directions. Currently it's set to mirror across X, Y. Now what that means is if you, if you look at our little X, Y, Z icon down here on the bottom, the X axis and the Y axis makes a plane, right? It makes like a, a flat 2D um, direction. And so X, Y means it would mirror from the Z axis across the X and the Y axis. And that's not really what I want. Um, the easiest way to figure out where you need to mirror is to look at the axis that you're mirroring across. So in my case, I want to mirror from X. I want to go um, across X. Right? I want to go from negative X to or from positive X to negative X. And then I just look for the one that doesn't have X in it. So Y and Z doesn't have X, and that means it's going to mirror in the X direction across y and z. Now I could hit mirror and it would mirror it across but it would just name it L hip one L knee one. Um, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it rename it as it mirrors it across. So the reason I named it L underscore is because now I can search for L underscore and I can replace that with R underscore. And when I hit mirror I will get a completely new set of legs that is named correctly. Now it's important to remember one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they click root before they mirror. And if you do that, um, you get two root joints at the top here. And that's not what you need. You, you need to select the hip and everything below it and mirror that across. So now we have all of the joints we need for our robot.